Hello and welcome to our show Health and Wellness Myths versus Facts I'm Gargi Rawat Hormones affect everything from blood sugar to blood pressure growth fertility sex drive metabolism and even sleep One such hormone is insulin and insulin is a key factor in the development of diabetes This vital hormone you cannot survive without it regulates blood sugar in the body a very complicated process Now there is no doubt that many of you are aware of diabetes but few are aware of the role that insulin plays in the management and prevention of diabetes insulin usage and its role in diabetes management are surrounded by various myths now there are eminent endocrinologists with us today that can help you better understand how insulin plays a role in diabetes management We are joined today by Dr. K M Surya Narayan, a surgeon, vice admiral, senior professor, Department of Endocrinology, MSR Memorial Hospital, Bengaluru. Dr. Uday Fatke, a director, endocrinology and diabetes, Syed Sayadri Hospitals, Pune, and Dr. Ankit Shivastav, consultant, endocrinologist and diabetologist, Arogya Diabetes and Endocrine Center in Rachi. Thank you so much, doctors, for joining us on the program today. Uh, Dr. Surya Narayan, first. to you when we talk about diabetes we also talk about insulin sensitivity and deficiency so if you could explain to us what exactly is the role of insulin in our bodies and what is insulin and how does it work uh thank you very good morning to all of you no insulin is a hormone produced by some specialized cells called the beta cells located in the abdomen just behind our stomach Insulin is a very important hormone. After we eat food, it gets digested and absorbed to the blood stream and get converted into what we call the glucose or in commonly we call the blood sugar. This glucose on which we get the energy for the glucose to metabolize means for the glucose to enter the cell and liberate energy, insulin is very important. Insulin acts as a key for movement of the glucose from the blood to the cell to produce energy. That's how it is very important. And insulin also tries to convert this glucose into a storage form called the glycogen, which is stored in the liver and utilized whenever we are hungry or whenever we are fasting. So when we eat the food, more insulin is produced so that. our blood sugar or the blood glucose is kept within a normal range when we are fasting the insulin secretion becomes less and there is another hormone called the glucagon which is also secreted by the pancreas which tries to increase the blood sugar so that it doesn't go down so insulin is a very important hormone to maintain our blood glucose within a normal range in healthy people and if it is deficient or if it is not functioning properly then the blood glucose levels go high that is what we call the damage thank you all right uh, dr fatke what happens when a body cannot make insulin what causes a person's body to not produce insulin or produce insulin in lesser quantity than uh, is the body's requirement so as already explained if the body does not produce insulin the blood glucose cannot enter the cells where it is utilized for energy and therefore the cells feel deprived of energy and that's why we feel very hungry now because the blood glucose does not enter the cells it remains in the blood and therefore the blood sugar starts rising and eventually all this extra sugar is excreted through urine and therefore there is large quantity of urine being produced and because there is water loss in the urine the patient feels hungry now because glucose cannot be utilized by the cells there has to be an alternative fuel to provide energy and hence fat burning starts and that is why patients lose weight so these are the typical symptoms of diabetes excess hunger excess urination excess thirst and weight loss now insulin is not produced in the body due to several reasons severe insulin deficiency can be because of immunological destruction of the cells which produce insulin in the pancreas that is what we call type 1 diabetes or it can be a genetically programmed slow but partial destruction due to what we call type 2 diabetes certain drugs which are used 
say like steroids or drugs used in psychiatry can be cause can cause uh, typical insulin deficiency and lastly destruction of the pancreas due to recurrent attacks of pancreatitis can also cause insulin deficiency all right dr shivasta what is the insulin resistance and which specific conditions or agents can cause insulin resistance no a very pertinent question because that is what we deal in on a day to day basis so insulin resistance is a condition where the insulin is not able to act properly in our body so as the term itself says resistance to the action of insulin in our body so what our body tries is to increase insulin secretion to overcome this insulin resistance so insulin resistance is the primary cause of diabetes and everything which we commonly see in our body there are a lot of conditions which lead to insulin resistance the commonest of which is obesity if we have a sedentary lifestyle we eat a lot of fatty food if we have a family history of diabetes then also we can have a lot of insulin resistance uh, conditions like pcos are known to be causing chemical, uh, insulin resistance in females a lot of drugs like steroids as mentioned by dr fatke a lot of psychiatric drugs also causes a lot of insulin resistance so this is how insulin resistance practically affects us all right dr surya narayan in which uh, age groups is insulin resistance most common what causes insulin resistance in children yeah if you say ask me insulin resistance can occur at all age groups young as well as the adults as well as the elderly people but most common particularly young adults it can occur people mostly who are obese for more weight and also a family history of diabetes and obesity it also occurs in children nowadays because of the less physical activity and more of high calorie food when they store lot of fat particularly around our waist and within our tummy this fat is one which is not a good fat it's a harmful one then the insulin is not able to function properly and that's what we call the insulin resistance so most of the patients of adults who get this type 2 diabetes what we call they have insulin resistance even people who are lean and have diabetes they can also have insulin resistance as brought out by dr shiva so drugs like steroids which are very commonly used in covid management can cause lot of insulin resistance and cause more high blood glucose as well as precipitate or unmask a person who has got diabetes which he doesn't know if you ask me children children most common cause is still overweight less physical activity high calorie diet eating junk food but in addition there are some conditions which are transmitted from parents to children what we call the genetic transmission something called lipodystrophy where there is not much of fat in the body there is resistance to the insulin associated with other abnormalities like increased liver fat so a lot of genetic problems including the chromosomal mutations particularly in children can cause but predominantly what we find today even in children the obesity and overweight is still the commonest cause of insulin resistance right now doctor ode what are the criteria for diagnosing uh, insulin resistance and does insulin resistance mean diabetes so the criteria for diagnosing insulin resistance are many but most of the times we do not need complicated tests to diagnose insulin resistance in general the indian race is insulin resistant in most people i would say but being overweight and being centrally obese by central obesity i mean a lot of fat around the waist what we call a paunch these people are very likely to be insulin resistant if you look at the neck color of people you might often see dark areas which are shadowing around the neck and people who have this dark coloration around the neck along with some wart like features there could also be insulin resistant the presence of fat inside the liver or low hdl cholesterol and high triglycerides 
are also signs of insulin resistance. And then finally, in certain research protocols, we do measure serum insulin levels, but that is more in certain research based uh, things. We don't need to measure this regularly. Now, the second part of the question is whether insulin resistant means diabetes. No, it doesn't, but certainly is a forerunner to develop diabetes. So in the beginning, the body tries to overcome the insulin resistance by secreting more insulin, but there is a limit to what the pancreas can produce. And beyond the point, if insulin resistance is not brought down, the pancreas gets fatigued and diabetes results. But apart from that, insulin resistance also is always associated with fat in the liver or with higher chances of developing cardiac and vascular diseases. All right, uh, Dr. Srivastava, as we've already discussed in type 1 diabetes, the pancreas produces no insulin or very little insulin. Do people with type 1 diabetes need insulin injections daily? And what happens if they miss a dose? No, uh, type 1 diabetes is an unfortunate condition where the insulin deficiency is total. Like there is absolutely no insulin secretion in for most of our patients. Now, these patients are usually of younger age and they are totally dependent on insulin. Now, this was a condition for which the discovery of insulin was miraculous. Before the discovery of insulin, most of these patients didn't survive. So they practically, it was kind of a death sentence. Diagnosis of type 1 insulin, type 1 diabetes before the discovery of insulin was kind of a death sentence. So it was as bad as that. So yes, these patients require insulin injections daily. Now, the number of insulin injections they require differs. Some of the patients usually early on, maybe on premix, uh, that is, they'll be requiring two insulin doses a day. But most of the patients are on four insulin doses a day. So three short-acting and one long-acting insulin is what they require. And it is essential for them. It is kind of something they are totally dependent on insulin because the body fails to produce insulin. And we don't have any oral medication which can actually take the place of insulin. Now, if such patients miss a dose of insulin, it depends uh, if it's a short acting insulin, there will be a rapid rise of sugars. If suppose the patient misses two or three doses of insulin, these patients can get drowsy. Uh, they can go into a condition known as diabetic ketoacidosis, which is the worst thing that can happen to a type 1 diabetic patient. So they need to be extra careful, don't need miss any dose of insulin and appreciate that insulin has changed their life. And that is something which the parent should also encourage to regularly take insulin. All right, well, we'll slip into a short uh, break now, doctors, but we'll return to discuss this important issue, the role that insulin plays in diabetes management. Welcome back. You're watching Health and Wellness. We're discussing the role that insulin plays in diabetes management. Uh, Dr. Surya Narayan, it is said that people who take insulin often gain weight. Is this true? Uh, thank you for this very important question because insulin can cause weight gain and a lot of our patients who need insulin, they are scared or they avoid taking insulin because of the fear of weight gain. Yes, insulin is an anabolic hormone, means it increases the body weight. How does it do? Because of different ways, a person who has got very poorly controlled blood sugar, particularly in the early stages of diabetes, he has lost a lot of weight. So when we start insulin, the blood glucose is well controlled and the weight improves and comes to the virginal weight. That is one mechanism. The second mechanism, as I said, it is an anabolic hormone, tries to help store energy, food in the sort of a fat and also increases little bit the muscle mass. And thirdly, patients who are on insulin do develop sometimes the low blood sugar or the blood glucose, what we call the hypoglycemia. When the person has got repeated hypoglycemia or low blood sugar, that the chances are there, the person keeps eating more and adds to the calories and puts on weight. So to avoid this, the patient or the person should do the blood sugar check frequently 
and kept the blood sugar levels within the range as advised by the doctor so that it doesn't go very high or very low if it goes low then it develops low sugar and tends to eat so if it maintains the optimal good blood sugar control the chances of weight gain also becomes much less in addition those who are on insulin should regularly exercise at least 30 minutes of walking or any activity and also have a nutritious balanced diabetic diet and not overeat a lot many patients anticipate to eat once they are on insulin thinking that they may not they may get hypoglycemia but that should be avoided so by different mechanisms it can cause weight gain but whenever insulin is needed the patient has to take and try to avoid putting on the weight by regular activity physical exercises like walking and also by dietary control and avoiding the high calorie diet and junk food all right dr uday uh, what types of insulin preparations are used in the treatment of diabetes mellitus and which type of insulin is most effective so the currently used insulin is what we call human insulin so it's not derived from humans as such but the genetic sequence of this insulin is exactly the same as that is present in a human body it is prepared in laboratories through certain uh, technology so it's it's like uh, insulin which is produced in normal people now there are different forms of insulin and they differ mostly by the time course of action so broadly speaking we have insulins which act over a short period of time say over 4 to 6 hours we call them short acting insulins and we have long acting insulins which roughly work between 16 to 24 hours plus we call them basal or long acting insulins and depending on the need of the patient these insulins are used in appropriate times sometimes alone or sometimes by combining these two types of insulin now all types of insulin are equally effective and it's not that one particular type of insulin is better than the other it is the way in which insulin is utilized commensurate with the needs of the patient and after looking at the kind of disease that he has or she has we can optimize the efficacy of the insulin but all insulins are equally effective right uh, dr shrivastav now each person may have a different insulin dosage is a person's insulin dosage the same every day Uh, a very pertinent question and i think that is something which we always counsel our patients so yeah uh, in a normal healthy individual what happens is the body constantly kind of adjusts its insulin secretion so if suppose a person is actively physically working out in a gym or something his insulin secretions comes down if he is having a feast suppose he is having a lot of sweets his insulin secretion goes up so the body can itself adjust the insulin secretion and can control the level of sugars by itself now what happens when we give insulin from outside we are giving a standard fixed dose of insulin to the patient and the patient either has to modify his lifestyle according to the insulin or has to modify the insulin dosage according to his lifestyle so most of the patient who have been on a long time with insulin kind of realize and we also counsel the patient accordingly suppose the patient is going to uh, go on a long trek today an unaccustomed physical activity he needs to decrease the dose of insulin otherwise his sugars will go down if the person is suppose undergoing of going to take a fasting suppose ramzan or something a religious fasting he needs to cut down this dose of insulin by a lot suppose a person is going to a feast going to a marriage party he needs to increase the dose of insulin so that his sugars remains under control so yes uh, the patient needs to adjust his insulin on a day to day basis so as the diabetes remains under control his sugars are perfectly normal this i think the patient needs to understand and many a times we also teach the patient to manage the insulin dosages accordingly right uh, dr surya narayan now what is the time frame for taking insulin before meals if you forget to take it before eating can you then take it during or after the meal 
Yeah, as Dr. Padke brought out, there are different types of insulins. The type frame depends on the onset of action and the duration of action of the insulin. What we call the regular human short-acting insulins, their onset of action starts, say, half an hour to one hour and start last for four to six hours. Whereas now we are got by this biosynthetic mechanism or bioengineering mechanism, what we call the recombinant insulins, rapid acting insulins, which starts acting faster and the action lasts shorter also. And the long acting insulins called the basal insulins, which act for 24 to 36 hours. So when the insulin, what time before or after depends upon the type of insulin. The regular human insulins should be taken at least 20 to 30 minutes before the meal. That's very important. That is to match between the insulin level in the blood and the food the person is taking so that he doesn't develop the low blood sugar or very high blood sugar after eating the food. Whereas the rapid acting insulins or the analogs has to be taken five minutes to 10 minutes before food. Now we have got ultra fast acting insulin also the advantage of this insulin is that it can be taken immediately or even up to 15 minutes after food. So particularly this type of insulin is useful in children or even in pregnant ladies or in old people, this ultra fast acting insulin. As far as the basal insulin is concerned, because they act in a very flat way for more than 24 hours, they can be taken any time of the day. But the most important point is the insulin has to be taken at the same time of the day. Suppose it takes night, 9 o'clock today. Next day also he has to take at night, 9 o'clock. That's what we emphasize to the patient and advise. Exceptional cases, we can go here and there, but some of the insulins, like even the other insulins like large in U300, they have got more flexibility and can be taken slightly this side or that side, but most of the patients should stick to the same time of the day. So, depending upon the time of the insulin, how much time before food or at any particular time, it has to be decided. And this pre-mixed insulins, depending upon whether it's analogs or regular insulins, has to be taken either 5 minutes or 30 minutes before food. The most important is the technique of administration, the storage of insulin. That is also important in the insulin administration. So, in uh, as to, regarding your second question, can you take after meal? Usually, as I said, the regular insulin should be taken before meal and the rapid acting and the ultra fast acting insulins can be taken after meal. But if somebody has forgotten or due to some reasons is not able to take, one should take even the regular insulins immediately after meal. And as for the long acting insulins, they can be taken after meal or before meal at the same time of the day. All right. Well, thank you so much, doctors, for joining us on the program and talking about this very important issue of insulin and diabetes management. Uh, thank you all for watching. Goodbye.